Y takes you on a journey. A journey where you'll explore the nuances of energy. You'll visit the angelic realms and study the ancient wisdom and teachings of spirituality. We want you to reach within and discover the magnificent being that you came here to be. We help shine God's divine healing light by bringing love, light, and blessings into your world. And now, here is the host of Healing Light, Terry Van Horn. Hello and welcome to Healing Light. This is Terry Van Horn and I want to welcome everyone to our program and just thank you all so much for being here with me and for being so wonderful and generous as I have changed program formats and have come on with Om Times Radio. So I really do appreciate that wonderful team for all of their help and support in getting me connected with even more wonderful listeners. Now, for those who aren't that familiar with me, I'm a Reiki master healer and teacher, but I'm also specialized in distant healing, color, crystal, and vibrational healing, along with intuitive readings and counseling. Now, I'm also sort of an earthly representative for a consortium of beings called the fifth element. And that's what we're going to talk about this time is the fifth element and what is going on with them. Now, you may have remember many years ago, there was a sci-fi movie with Bruce Willis that was not the greatest in the world, and it was called The Fifth Element. So trust me, when I got the information that I was going to be receiving information from The Fifth Element, I was really questioning what was going on with that. Uh, A dear friend was helping me with this and helping me to connect with this information and these energies, And I kept asking her over and over. It's like, are you sure that's the name? The Fifth Element? Seriously? That's a bad sci-fi movie. But what I ended up doing is trusting her, trusting the messages from Spirit, and buying the movie. Because if that movie resonated so much with the name of this group, then I had to find out what this movie was about. So, I did. Basically, we all know that we have four elements. It's earth, fire, water, and air. And so, in watching the movie, I discovered what the fifth element is. And it's me. It's you. It's all of us here on this planet. We are all the fifth element. And... We, as this fifth element, are just as crucial as the other four elements because when it gets down to it, if we're not there, the other four elements are going to disappear as well. Now, when I was getting these messages, you know, I was like, what? You know, I'm going to help save the earth kind of thing. You know, you kind of get this visual of somebody running around their house with a superhero cape on saying, you know, I'm going to save the world. Well, you know, that couldn't be more the opposite of who I am. Actually, I was like, are you sure this message is right? And is this really for me? You know, are you sure about this? But over time and in watching the movie a couple of times, I have to admit I've learned more about the whole concept of the fifth element. Now, this is really, you know, a job that we all have. So I don't want anybody to think that, you know, this is just my deal. This is for all of us. We are all considered to be the fifth element. The fifth element is love. And when you watch that movie... I'll save you two hours of your time. Uh, But they had to get these special four special stones together into the sacred area 
and put them on their respective pillars. And as they did that, nothing happened. Now, the clock was ticking down to save the earth from complete and total destruction. They couldn't figure it out. And then finally, this being who came from another dimension goes and she lays down on a platform between all of these other element stones. And then everything activated. But it all came through her. And then it went up into the atmosphere and saved the planet. So think about that. We all have the ability to do this. And we all have the ability to project unconditional love. Sometimes we just have to get out of ourselves and get out of our way so that we can do this. You know, what it gets down to is that our job with saving the planet is all about raising the vibrations and it's about raising awareness that something needs to happen right now. Now, we have some amazing some really brave and talented beings who are kind of working in the trenches to help make these changes. You know, we've talked about how we have the indigos and the crystals and the rainbows. They've been working on this. But now the rest of us need to come on board. And we need to help them by bringing in even more light and more healing to help this manifest quicker. We need a light intervention here on earth. And the only ones who can do it are us. Now, whenever I got this message about a light intervention, my question was, okay, and what exactly does that mean? And I got a whole list of information about this. Number one. We need to raise and hold our own vibrations to the highest possible levels. Now, as we do this, obviously, it's going to help us to raise our spirituality and to improve the quality of our lives tremendously. But also, it's going to help raise the vibrations and the frequencies of everybody around us and with the earth. So... You know, look around. When you see times and situations where there are disagreements, do what you can to bring harmony back to light. Our next task is to take action to help preserve the land, the animals, and the water. Now, that's a big job. We need to visualize and see the land as being healthy and healed from all of the mining, all the destruction, all the stripping of the resources. You know, humans have really done a number on this planet, and this is our home. And we need to visualize it as that Garden of Eden, that beautiful paradise that it was in the beginning. See it as being that healed and that healthy. We also need to visualize the animals all being healthy, healed, respected, and treated as our partners. You know, they are. We're all living here together on this planet, and we need to partner with them. They have a lot to teach us. I've learned more from animals during my life, I think, than I have from humans. So we need to do that. And last and absolutely not least is that we need to know that our waters are clearing and healing and that there is plenty of clean and pure water to go around for everyone on this planet. Now, another thing that we need to do is to love others unconditionally. Now, I know you're making a face. And I get that. I can kind of make a face on a few people as well. But we need to do this whether they deserve it or not. What we need to do is love that little spark of God within them. 
love that divine part of them. You don't have to love what they do. Love their soul. That will help us tremendously. We need to use our light to overcome the darkness that's around us and the darkness of others who are around us. You know, when you have people or anything with two vibrational frequencies, things will shift and it will go to the higher frequency. So let's do that. Don't allow yourself to get drugged down. Keep yourself up and you will pull others up. Now, we also need to pray and affirm that all these things are happening on a daily basis all around the world. That's another big one. And we need to make sure that we are seeing it that way. We need to keep the positive up in thought, word, and deed. Okay, we're not talking about being a total Pollyanna here. But if you're going to raise your vibrational frequency, if you're going to help with this, these are the things that need to happen. We live in the real world, and, you know, sometimes we have really lousy days, and that's okay. Let's just don't turn a lousy day into a lousy month or a lousy year. You can bring it back up. Focus on the light encircling the earth so that it's healing her in every way possible. And then see her surrounded with healing angels, helping and loving and supporting in every way. Work on forgiveness for others and yourself. That's a really big one that we all need to work on. So we're going to go back through and add more to this list. But we're going to take a little break first. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about what the fifth element has for us. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi. This is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you ready to shift your energy, consciousness, and limiting beliefs? Join me, Shafali Burns, every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Shifting with Shafali here on Ohm Times Radio. Shift the blocks, limitations, and negative energies that have kept you from experiencing a life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Are you ready to shift with Shafali? Are you ready to shine your brilliance? Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. This is Terry Van Horn, and we're back with Healing Light. And we're talking about the fifth element and which is a consortium of angels and guides that I connect with, and some of the messages that they are sending to us now that we really need to work with and focus on to help raise the frequency of the planet as well as to improve our own personal life. Now, we've been talking about some of the things that they've suggested that we do to create a light intervention here for the Earth. Now, one of the things that they really want us to do 
is to take the fear out of our life. Now, this is hard. You know, we only have two emotions. We have the emotion of love, and we have the emotion of fear. Everything else comes off of those two. You know, we all work in a universe of opposites. So, the opposite of love is fear. So, we need to just banish fear from our lives. Do it as much as we possibly can. Release it from your life. So, this one takes some practice. It takes some effort. You know, I work on it daily. I say affirmations based on letting go of fear. What I say is, I am releasing all feelings of fear in my life. Now, no matter where you turn, you're seeing so much negativity. I mean, you know, mainstream media, really almost all media, focuses on one thing, fear. I mean, how many times do you actually see stories that are all about, you know, puppies and kittens and rainbows and butterflies and flowers? You don't see that. So what we need to do is to take that fear out of our life. And when we do that, things start changing. So that means to banish all of those visions of harm. You know, Facebook is just notorious for people posting horrible things. You know, people that have been murdered, children who have been tortured, animals who have been tortured and killed. I mean, you you see it all the time. You see it on Facebook. You see it on the Internet. You see it in the news. We need to let those images go and visualize only positive ones. You know, the higher your vibrational frequency, the less interested you are in things like watching the news or watching violent programs or movies. And you need to kind of shift with that. It's going to change you a lot. Now, also, one of the really big things right now, and we're not going to, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, is terrorism and the war. Now, that's a huge fear for a lot of people, particularly when we have all of these, you know, shooters coming out and just, you know, randomly trying to kill people. Now, what you need to do, first of all, is to encircle yourself with love and light and always ask the angels to protect you. Now, if you see something on TV or on the Internet that is about terrorism or war, Please understand, first of all, that I am not downplaying the impact that it has on the people that it is affecting directly. I pray for them all the time. I envision them living in a world of peace. But for my own sanity and for my own removal of fear in my life, if I happen to see an image of a terrorist, I kind of think of it as being like the Energizer Bunny. Big, pink, huge ears, big feet, you know, just this goofy bunny running around with a silly mask. Kind of takes the whole power out of that guy when you start visualizing him as the Energizer Bunny. You see, the bottom line is that the more we visualize that light and love and look at things in a more positive and loving way, the darkness will dissipate. And it will change the people around you. So if you are living or in a situation where you are, you know, you're developing on a spiritual level. And then you have this person by your side who is not. And they're kind of like wallowing in the mud of evolution still. It's okay. Hold your ground. Don't let them pull you down. You're going to pull them up. You know, we've got a lot of dark energies that have surrounded the earth. You know, you've seen it. I've seen it. We know it's here. 
Okay, that's just a fact of life. But now, right now is our time to let it go. We can do that, and we will. And in doing so, we're going to save our planet from destructing with our own hand. But in order to do this, we're going to have to work hard, and we're going to have to be very diligent about it. And remember that just because you don't see results immediately after the first 10 minutes of your visualizations, don't give up. You know, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It means that it's going to take work. It's going to take a whole group of us to do this. But we know that we have a tremendous group of angels, guides, ascended masters, and others who are working very, very hard on the other side to help make this happen as well. So the message from the fifth element is basically we all need to grab our superhero cape and we need to get out there and start saving the world. You know, you can do it at one smile at a time, one hug at a time. You know, the fifth element itself is really all about working continuously without fear to spread the light. Now, this is what I've been told that I'm supposed to do personally, 100% of the time. Others will also do this as well. But we all have a part to play in this, every single person. Now, I'm very big on sharing credit for anything that I do because it's not just me. It's never just me. So I want to let you know about some of my guides, some of the angels that are really helping with this whole process because this is a big group and there are a lot of them that I don't even know yet that are still part of it. I have Malachi, who was one of my very first guides who came to me. I have Angelica, Iyala, Elsance, Lawton, Seisha, Galen, and many others. I have one who just calls himself T, which is really kind of cute and funny. Now, we have a lot of archangels in this group that are working very, very hard to make this happen. You know, there are thousands and thousands of archangels out there, and we're going to talk about them in another program later on, in, I believe in December. But some of the ones that are directly working on this are Michael, Gabriel, Raziel, Haniel, Ariel, Butel, Rael, Charity, Jerissa, Jules, Metatron, Perlamic, Hope, Raphael, Rokiel, Mary, and I know there are others, but I just don't have all the names yet. But you know, we've been dealing with negative energies that have really been pounding on this planet for thousands of years. And our job, we came here, we were born here during this time to make this happen and to pull this whole thing off. So that's what we're supposed to do. This is your assignment for the week, actually for the rest of your life. We can and we will create that utopia that we all have dreamed of and heard of. You know, we're supposed to hold and to share with others, you know, the whole information and the powerful qualities of positive belief, unconditional love. And that when we do work together and to use these things together, amazing and beautiful things happen. So live in light. Live in love. Live in gratitude. Live in forgiveness. In harmony. Faith. Positivity. Peace. And truth. Live in knowing that we will reign supreme. And this is the most all-important time 
for the fifth element and all those who are joining it to become fully activated so that we can begin to make these very significant and powerful changes for our planet. Now, all of this was basically the first message that I got from them. And it amazed me. You know, it was just so powerful. And I thought, my gosh, you know, this is a big one. And, you know, I can only imagine what future messages are going to be. And we do have some wonderful and additional messages that we need to work with and share. Now, another one that they gave me is based on race. And, you know, it's a huge one because we do have to deal with that. We have to work on, you know, just really acknowledging and accepting the fact that we are all one. We've had a lot of stuff going on, you know, lately pertaining to race, pertaining to, you know, one group feeling that they're being underserved or, you know, that somebody else has a better deal. But, you know, we have to look at it from a bigger picture. This isn't about just me. It's not about just you or any one individual. This is about all of us. And when the message came through to me with the fifth element, whenever it was regarding to race, they came in and they really hit hard. It's an amazing and a very powerful message. And what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about it just as soon as we get back from our break. Because I want this one to come to you in one fell swoop, and you're going to love it. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, and we're talking about what the fifth element wants to say to us about race. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio. IOM FM. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Healing Light, on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Join Elliot Jolish. The Business Therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. This is Terry Van Horn with Healing Light, and we're back talking about the fifth element. Now, 
I get amazing and extremely powerful messages from this group of angels and guides. And when we were going through some of the big racial tensions and people were starting with, you know, the Black Lives Matter, the All Lives Matter, then I received a message. And sometimes whenever I receive these messages, it's really more as though I'm just writing a blog, you know, and the message comes through me. So I'm going to tell you about the one that I wrote regarding race. Now, this one is partially from the fifth element. I mean, it was definitely inspired by them. But this one's a little little bit more personal in a different way. Now, what happened was that, you know, I have a huge Facebook page. It's easy to find, Healing Light Online for Facebook. We have right now 1.8 million followers, which is just amazing. But every once in a while, somebody gets their feelings hurt. And they'll complain that I'm not representing a particular race or, you know, that there need to be more pictures of someone from whatever ethnic group. And, you know, it struck me that everybody needs to feel validated separately because they feel threatened if we're all considered to be human beings, which that's what we are. And then I got this message, and I mean, it was just blasting. I felt like the trumpets were coming in, and I had somebody on a loudspeaker giving me this message. And it was definitely from the fifth element. It says, we are light. Nothing else. Our spirits are light, and they're in a human container at the moment. We really are all one, and we need to accept that fact. Now, that is pretty darn straightforward. You know, we're light. We are spirits. We're made of the same stuff as the universe and the stars and the angels. But we keep trying to identify ourselves with that human container. And then there are the people who want to hyphenate who and what they are. And, you know, I started thinking about it. I said, yeah, I could do that, too. So, if you want to refer to me, you can say very easily, I am Pleiadian. I'm Lemurian twice, Atlantean at least once, Mongolian, ancient Chinese, ancient Egyptian, Fifth dimension, spent a lot of time out there. I'm more contemporary Egyptian, Mongolian, European, English during the Middle Ages, Welsh, Scottish, British Regency, Colonial, Texan, American. Now, these are just some of the incarnations that I've had in the past. And I'm sure there are plenty more. So, you know, if you really want to get into the whole hyphenation thing about identifying who you are, that's me. Now, on a genetic level, I'm French with a whole lot of royalty way back there. I'm Scottish. As a matter of fact, William Wallace, Braveheart, was actually, I believe, my 27th uncle, great uncle. There's a lot of Welsh and Scottish and British. British in my background. And, you know, it's, I'm also a sixth generation Texan. Now, sounds kind of impressive, but you know, it doesn't mean a thing. Nothing at all, because it's stuff in the past. My family has roots back to William Wallace and even further back to Charlemagne. Does that make me any different or special than anybody else? Not at all. You know, none of that truly says who I am. You know, nothing 
in that whole list of all those different identities and countries and everything tells who Terry is. And, you know, we have many different identities. You know, I have a precious, adorable, greatest grandchild on the planet who is 10 years old, and he calls me Grandma. And I love him with all my heart. He actually refers to us as being twins because we were born on the same day within an hour apart. And there's a small matter of about 45 years in between. But genetically, he and I are not related. But on a soul level, we could not possibly get any closer than we are. Now that
A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. And this is Terry Van Horn with Healing Light. And we've been talking about this whole group of angels and guides that I work with that refer to themselves as the fifth element. Now, as I was saying, the other day I was sitting down to write something else. It was just going to be a little paragraph, and it ended up being a couple pages long. Uh, And it is another message from the fifth element. Now, I get these messages when I'm writing. That's my way of picking it up. Sometimes I do pick it up intuitively whenever I'm speaking, and have speaking engagements, but most of the time, these messages come once I just sit down, kind of clear, and start writing. Sometimes I don't even have to get clear. It's like, pick up a pen right now, let's get going. So I want to tell you the most recent message that they have given me and given us. Now, what they've said is that the energies are converging at this time to bring us a great transformation for this world. Now, as light workers, it's our responsibility to hold the space for this. We need to hold the space for the way showers to really get to their work. You know, they're weaving together a magnificent crystal grid along with a planetary alignment. Now, with this, there's the temples of the galactic angels. Now, I was not familiar with the term galactic angels, but they told me that they are highly spiritual ones that are from other dimensions who have created their own grid based on where they're located and along our planetary ley lines and sacred sites. And they're telling me that this is a highly important time for us all. It's like we're at the tipping point right now. We can go either way. You know, we're at the peak of the mountain. Do you want to go right? Do you want to go left? You only have two choices. Do you want to go to the light? Or do you want to remain where we are and stay in this kind of semi-darkness? Right now, it is our choice. And we have to decide which direction we want to go. 
dark or light. Now, what do we need to do to help bring all of this about? Again, they're coming up with suggestions. They're going to keep giving us suggestions and telling us what to do because they're that serious about it. They want us to hold a space of love, positive living, and thoughts. They want intentions of peace and love. Dispel the negativity around you. Now, they came up with this great visual. Remember the 60s? You know, everything was like all love, peace, harmony. You know, let everybody follow their path. Do your own thing. Well, that's what they want for us. They're telling us that, you know, when we were doing it in the 60s, we were just a little bit too radical on it. We were too much, too fast. They threw in you know, some of the drug things, and it just kind of didn't work. It was a great experiment, kind of fell flat. But now is the time for us to do this. It is the time to focus on love, peace, letting others follow their path, recognizing that we are all one. We need to do this. We need to get to work on it. We just don't need it to hit as hard and fast as it did in the 60s. We do it a little bit slower, a little bit, you know, kind of a grace and ease. And then the rest of the world's going to follow along with us. Now, we need to bring the rest of the world along through knowledge, prayer, and meditation. You know, you just can't say, well, you got to do... What I say, you got to do what I do. Don't worry about it. No, we need to educate. We need to give them the knowledge and let them understand what's going on here. So, the fifth element says, pray for unconditional love for all. You know, they touched on that in their very first message to me. They want us to, again, pray to dispel fear. If you just say, an, you know, an I am statement, I am releasing fear from my life. I mean, that right there is huge and it's powerful. It's going to help you take back your power and take control of your life. It's going to be really very, very easy to do. Just keep that meditation, that little mantra right there. Write it on a sticky note, stick it all over the place and remember it. Now, the other thing that the fifth element wants you to do is they want you, each one of us, to meditate and ask our own angels and guides for guidance and direction with this as well, because they tell me that they're going to have individual assignments. So we need to know exactly what they are. They want us all to spend at least 15 minutes or so a day focusing on these things so that we can transform the collective thought process and change humanity. This is what we need to do to help save our planet. You know, they told me that, and we've heard it from other people as well, we all chose to be here now. We came here with a very special purpose. We We're all in Atlantis and Lemuria in the past. So, if you all feel that you have a connection with one of these two civilizations, you do. We all came back. Okay? When we were there before, we were not able to prevent the catastrophe that happened and ended those situations, those civilizations. So, what we need to do now is that we know... What caused those problems? What helped those civilizations destroy themselves? And what we need to do is take that inner knowledge and use it as an opportunity to change the course of humanity today. You know, stay away from all the negativity. Stay away from all the fear stuff with the anger, you know, the media, all the, you know, bad things. Don't fear what's going on. When you do, you give those things, those situations, those people, power. And you know what we need to do 
is completely starve them to death. The more we focus on it, the more power, the more we're feeding it. And so we need to just let that part go. Just don't do it. And just focus on the love and light. We need to clear the air, literally and figuratively. You know, when we stop thinking about these people and we stop living in fear, we are really, literally sucking the oxygen out of them. And they won't be able to survive. They won't be able to continue. So empower yourselves. Stay strong. Stay in the light. Let go of fear and replace it with love, peace, and joy. Those are the things that we came here to experience in the beginning. But we do have that secondary mission. Because of our experiences in Atlantis and Lemuria, we need to really get things going and change that cycle. You know, it's never too late to make a change. Everyone has free will. Everyone has the opportunity to make a change. And that's what our angels want us to do. We can change the course, the direction that we're on immediately. But we have to want to. And that is the key. So I want to thank you so much for being with me today and for being with the fifth element and listening to some of their messages. Trust me, they've got a lot more to say. And, you know, I'm constantly getting messages from them. And I will be sharing those with you from time to time. But we do appreciate you being with us. You know, we couldn't do these programs without you. and We really do appreciate you so much more than you'll ever know. If you're not able to access our programs live, you can always come back to the archives on OM Radio and listen to them at any time. Now, next Wednesday, we're going to talk about how to stay positive in a negative world. This is a con- pretty much a continuation of the message from the fifth element. And they want to share this message with you. It's really that important. And they want you to know how you can change things for yourself and with others. Now, if you want to learn more about me, what I do, in addition to connecting with the fifth element, you can always find me on my website, healinglightonline.com, on Facebook, keywords, Healing Light Online. You can also find me on Instagram and on Twitter. So I try to reach as many different social networks as I possibly can. And I love being able to share these messages with you. That's what I'm here to do. And I couldn't think of a more wonderful and more exciting mission for my life. So thanks again for being with us, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. I wish you love, light, and many, many blessings. Namaste.